Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Hanatrak and this is my um, recording studio makeover video thingy. Um, so I have a couple of problems here that I wanna that I wanna resolve. This is my my current recording setup. You got the the mic over here, you got the screen over there, and then I kind of sit on this ball to actually support my back. It's actually really good if you got the, if you sit um, all day to sit on one of these balls because um, it's gonna help your um, back muscles to stay strong. So um, the problem that I have is if I record over here, I got a lot of echo, a lot of reverberation. Because these are just normal, normal walls, and they throw back a lot of um, sound. Like you can hear it; it actually sounds really, really echoey. It's gotten a little bit better, better since I got the curtain over here. Um, because prior to that, the curtain was also uh, the the window was also throwing back a lot of sound. But I really want to make this a lot better. So what I've thought up as a solution is. I bought all these sound foam tiles. Each of these is 25 by 25 centimeters. And I'm gonna create a, um, basically a sound absorbing panel. I had actually six of these. I'm gonna uh, glue them on these wooden um, panes over here. For that, I got a special type of glue. I got this um, extra strong um, spray glue. I'm gonna spray it on these guys and then um, glue all of these together in a in a uh, sort of a chess um, board pattern. And then I'm gonna put these guys on the wall, all on the walls around my around my workspace and even on the ceiling. And uh, I'm gonna do that by, um, uh, I actually unpacked some of the things that I'm gonna use to put them there. So I got um, these guys and I'm gonna put one on the back of these panels and then the other goes on the wall and then they kind of interlink right one um, made uh, uh, fitted onto the panel one fitted onto the wall and then they can sort of um, click and hang there that's for the um, for the wall panels for the ceiling I have kind of a different thing I'm going to use these hooks on the uh, on the wooden panel and then I'm going to put these guys into the ceiling and I'm just going to hang it from there. So that's the one thing that I want to do. The other thing is um, I have a thing for my for my green screen. That's kind of these metal -y things. These hold up my lamps, but I have the same thing to keep the green screen up. And it's kind of shit. It's actually kind of shit because I have to set it up every time I want to use it. So what I've thought of instead is... I'm actually going to put these up as kind of a curtain. So I bought these curtain things and I'm going to montage this. I'm going to put this on the ceiling and then I'm going to put the curtain on there. And then every time I um, actually need the green screen, I can just pull out the curtain. And if I don't need it, I can fold it in one um, of the edges of the room. So that's the that's the big plan. That's what I'm going to do, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, I guess, where you can see how I actually do that. So, if you have ever wondered how 150 tiles of sound foam look, this is it. Um, I've unpacked them all, and now i got to let them lie for at least 24 hours, because they've been heavily compressed for um, shipping. And now they got to basically get back all their... Um, their air, I mean, if they're not going to pull enough air, I actually might have to use some water or something to increase the process. So this is the first step, letting them breathe again, and then we're going to actually put them on um, some wooden um, panels. So this is the basic idea, um, gluing these uh, acoustic foam panels, uh, tiles, to the, uh, to the wooden uh, panel. So we're just using a little bit of the glue, spraying something on the panel, spraying something on the back of the tile, and then just pressing it firmly on there. And uh, because of the special kind of glue that we're using, it's going to be there instantly. And uh, that thing is going to basically look like this. This is the um, one of the panels. The first panel is already up, and then. We kind of put it up there with these um, hooks and hooked it in there so there's a little bit of a gap between the uh, 
between the ceiling and the thing. So the sound booth is actually nearing completion. You can see that we have fitted the ceiling one and the ones on the left wall. And now um, only the panels that are actually facing my PC are missing right behind um, the desk. And we actually found out that we only need two of these fittings to make them uh, stick to the wall. So if you have a look here, they're basically just um, uh, fitted to the wall and, and with two of these things we have no fittings on the lower side but it should still um, hold the stuff up each of these um, screws will hold up about 30 kilos and these things are nowhere near as heavy that's the the back side of these panels you can see um, this is where it gets uh, fixed to the wall um, that's uh, one on the panel and then there's another one on the wall that comes in like this. And that basically um, has these guys um, firmly fitted to the wall. Um, on the front, there's the, the uh, chessboard. And on the back, it's plain wood and these fittings. All right. After a lot of hours, this is the finished recording booth. It's all filled with um, those foam panels, six of them, two to the left, two in the ceiling, and two in the back wall. And there's my table. I'm going to put all my PC stuff, the monitors and the actual PC to the right back on there again. The mic is going to go on the left, but now it should be a much nicer recording area. And then I think tomorrow I'm actually going to deal with the um, green screen curtain. And then I'm going to be done. Yay! Right, so this is the finished workspace. Um, should have taken a before and after picture. I guess I got one somewhere. Uh, if I do, I guess I'm gonna just edit that in. So yeah, built up my PC again. I have installed the mic and all that kind of stuff. It looks really nice now, really cozy. And you can already hear the different um, audio atmosphere. This stuff is absorbing a lot of unwanted echo reverberation however you want to call it right i'm pretty content tomorrow i'm going to do the green screen curtain and uh, then i'm going to call this good enough so finally after a lot of time in between this video and the last um the whole thing is completed uh we finished the recording booth in a very good time um the panels and all that because that was all prepared but it did turn out that the green screen cloth that I was using was just too thick to actually um, fit with the um, curtain clippers that I had to keep them in there. So what we had to do is I had to order the screen, the screen uh, fabric, and then my wife actually sewed all of this into a proper curtain. I'm just gonna so um, this is how that works. I got it all up there. Um, and now we got the green curtain right behind me. Over here is the booth. Over here is where I sit. And I got the green curtain behind me. I'm just going to um, pause the video. And uh, then I'm actually going to finish the whole curtain up so that you can see uh, and, and get a full view of the finished recording booth in here. Just a second. All right, now you're looking at the finished recording booth. I've closed the green screen curtain completely. You can see that it encloses my workspace and uh, then I got also these curtains over there which are also absorbing a lot of sound and then of course the noise foam is absorbing a crap ton of it um, this green screen and this curtain is directly behind me you can see the camera up on my up on my PC over there just gonna look on the on the screen and I got my lights um, over here it's these kind of daylight lamps that I bought um, big problem though is uh, I might actually have to go for an electrical solution on the ceiling because it doesn't really um, yeah, I'm not sure if I like the direction the light is coming from but other than that sound wise and green screen wise it is as good as it's gonna get I'm really happy now with the new recording um, but I guess I'm just gonna do the rest of this video maybe with the actual cam and demonstrate the green screen and all that.
this is the other side um, of my room. So the whole recording thing is completely contained inside that one corner of my room. And that was basically what I was trying to do with this because it was very important to me that I will that I'm able to um, move between a recording state in the room and a non-recording state very quickly because in the past I had to set up my um, my green screen um, on its metal frame and it took me a lot of time and it was often actually preventing me from doing anything with it then and just um, doing without the green screen which is um, not something that I want to do in the future especially if I go and uh, start streaming which I'm planning on doing this month in July um, then I really want to be to just able to pull the curtain and uh, start off with it right away. I might go for the for the lamps on the ceiling instead of having them standing over here. Would have to find a couple of lamps that are really suited for it. And uh, what I've also noticed is this is a rather dark room in and of itself. Maybe I could actually try to fit a lamp inside that gap in between the between the panels sort of have it hanging from there question is if that would be a fire hazard but these are not major things so i don't think they actually need to be um in this video other than that so this is my sort of sofa area um and then you got my tablet and uh, the um books i actually had 11 bookshelves uh, a couple of years ago when I was still studying, but I cut down pretty heavily um, setting um, the books that I didn't need. I've been trying to move towards um, ebooks more and more just because it is kind of, um, yeah, very heavy stuff. They're doing good work though, trying to eat the the sound in the, in the old recording room in the last flat well, actually because they are all very uneven and all that um sound doesn't get reverberated but instead gets um um yeah kind of destroyed uh thrown back and forth until it's um running itself dead um, but they don't really have to do that anymore so I might actually go ahead and cut down even further on the books problem is um they're not really sorted as of yet <laughs> i gotta uh, put a day aside to actually sort them um thematically and all that so i can actually find stuff again in there and uh, yeah people have been remarking on the chair it's actually a really comfy chair it used to belong to a set of um two sofas and the chair that we had uh we sell sold the other stuff but i uh, held on to the chair just because it's really really comfy over there all right that's that's going to be about it in terms of um showing off the the recording room hope you enjoyed it and I actually found a solution for my lighting problem. So um, one of the problems was um, that the right hand side lamp um, was actually showing up in the in the recording recording, even with um, making the field of view narrower. So um, what I wanted to do was bring the lamps up there, but I've now um, put a lamp in the corner over there, which is really, really uh, working well. Um, so what I've done basically is I've pulled the lamp part of these um, standing lamps off, and then I put it on my old mic stand over here, as you can see. So that is the that is the old mic stand over here that had um I had a hole in my in my desk for that problem with that why I'm no longer using that is because it is actually transmitting um vibrations off the table if I do anything on there um it is transmitting that to the mic even with the shock mount and even with some other stuff to uh, where I was trying to insulate it uh which basically caused me to Move on to the other mic stand over here that is completely isolated from the table in any, uh, uh, completely, it's not touching the table in any form or fashion. And then I got this contraption to actually hold the mic in front of my, um, in front of my mouth. But, uh, yeah, that's actually come in rather handy because I know I got this, um, put on the mic stand and I can, I can use that lamp. And it's actually giving a very nice light, um, from the from the left side behind the screen. I wasn't using that space in any case, so that's really good. And I think I'm just going to dispense with the right hand lamp because, I mean, how well do I need to be lit? It just need it needs to be the face, and this actually has the benefit of um, 
making my face look uh, very bright and illuminated. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I don't think I will actually go for the for the lamps up here on top. I don't think that that is necessary. Um, the only thing that could potentially be a problem is um, the heat that comes off the lamp. Um, but these um, these acoustic foam things are always um, um, treated with a fire retardant and stuff, so it shouldn't really be a fire hazard um, if I don't have that thing burning 24-7. So that is that is my solution for this. Um, this actually really concludes this now. <laughs> Very happy to see how um, that, that worked out. That was the final missing piece, the um, lighting solution. Здравствуй, привет, мой друг. Меня зовут Horat Truck, and we are playing Europa Universalis 4 together with the new DLC or Immersion Pack Third Rome. Здравствуй, привет, мой друг. Меня зовут Horat Truck, and we are playing Europa Universalis 4 together with the new DLC Immersion Pack Third Rome. And you've reached the end of the journey for a proper recording studio and green screen setup. Well done. Uh, it actually took me quite a bit longer than I thought it would, uh, mainly because my green screen plan, um, my initial one, didn't pan out because the cloth was too stiff that I had um, with the old setup. So I had to order new um, fabric and my wife had to custom tailor the whole thing and actually create a curtain that uh, was light enough and malleable enough to, to work as a curtain. You can see that the light is now coming from this side directly onto my face. So this side is a little bit um, brighter than the other, but I think uh, I can live with that. It's just it's just how, the, um, how it goes. But uh, this way, I only uh, have to do two things. I have to flick the on switch on the lamp and I have to pull the curtain and I'm ready to um, use the the face cam recording stuff which is a huge improvement um, compared to the past um, and uh, the most important thing um, that i wanted to get rid of is um, the helmet glitch that i had i've been recording a lot of expeditions viking episodes and whenever i was fighting i was putting on the helmet in that series and that caused my green screen to glitch out that's no longer the case because the lighting conditions inside um, the recording booth are a lot more stable um, so that is absolutely fine because I'm, I actually want to do more, um, towards helmet, um, and, and other props when I, when I get on with the, with the streamings, I want to, want to maybe get a Spanish helmet, um, a Morion and then maybe a, um, yeah, a couple of other helmets and, and headgear. That's just, that's just fun. Um. Right. Um, I want to render proper things. Um, my dad, who is a real hand at carpentry, helped me fit um, the panes to the wall and to the ceiling. Um, I, maybe I could have done it without him, uh, but it would have taken me a lot longer. So thank you very much for um, your help and your patience. Um, my mother and my wife um, helped to glue the um, sound tiles, sound foam tiles onto the panes. Thank you very much for that. And special thanks goes to my wife who actually took her, took the time to custom make a curtain for me and who had to um, talk about the whole setup um, a lot of times um, with me. This has been a project uh, long in the making. I'm really happy that it's done now. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it um, either as a viewer and a subscriber to the channel. So now you know how my recording setup looks. Um, and where I do it. You can always picture um, the whole background setting uh, or you have been watching this maybe um, trying to set up your own recording studio. Maybe then you can use this as a little bit of an inspiration for your own setup. Um, but yeah, um, so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, you can leave a like and I hope I see you in one of my other series, either Let's Plays or tutorials or in one of the streams. So thanks. Bye bye.